So I love you people madly, but I'd love you more if you went forward and just went berserk on the skulls of the Democrats and the Marxists and the Communists. The other night, Green Day was trending on Twitter after the band's performance on its European tour, which featured a backdrop that read, Bleep Ted Cruz. Their message came during their June 4th stop in Nuremberg at the Rock in the Park Festival. Other performers included The Offspring, Weezer, Mainskin, Korn, A Day to Remember, and more. And as you can expect from social media, of course the I only accept peaceful protest, wait, no, not like that, people were telling the band that made American Idiot, which is about George W. Bush post 9-11, that popular music should stay out of politics and be more about entertainment because the band who has an album called Dookie should keep it classy. Which takes me to the clip I opened with. Artists and music that these same people actually prefer, like Ted Nugent, telling Trump supporters to go berserk on Democrats' heads during Trump's American Freedom Tour. But maybe political ideology doesn't really matter here. I mean, Trump rallies feature people rocking out to Fortunate Son by Credence Clearwater Revival and written by John Fogarty as if it doesn't describe Trump perfectly. Or any Rage Against the Machine song, really, because I guess the machine being raged against isn't fascism for election results deniers, it's Dominion voting machines. Even a song like We're Not Gonna Take It was played at the end of Trump rallies, and while the frontman of Twisted Sister, Dee Snyder, has said that he didn't write this anthem for or against anything in particular, just rebellion in general, well, by the way, you should know that he was okay with Trump using the song. Bernie Sanders too, but still. With that said, lyrics from We're Not Gonna Take It say, we've got the right to choose and there ain't no way we'll lose it. This is our life, this is our song. And if you think that applies to mask wearing, well, D. Snyder recently said, people are asking me why I endorse the use of We're Not Gonna Take It for the Ukrainian people and did not for the anti-maskers. Well, one is used for the righteous battle against oppression. The other is an infantile feet stomping against an inconvenience. So there's that. By the way, just look at all of the artists who told Trump and the Trump campaign they can't use their songs. So much cease and desist. Clearly a number of politicians want to keep their music out of some politics, but some politicians bring it right back in. Who else are Trumpers going to listen to? Kid Rock? Cool. Because certain political figures kind of ruin songs. It just occurred to me that Green Day could have done Wake Me Up when November ends during the 2020 election. Anyways, I don't know. Considering what I said earlier, it's interesting that certain segments of this country instinctively know when specific songs are protest against them and won't be on any of their playlists, but this is America. They're gonna try to label me crazy. Things like abortion and things like gay marriage are outside of the Christian moral order and they lead to chaos and destruction and a culture of death. So coming after your birth control after that and everything else, well, you know what? Yeah. This is going to be a fun one. That person who's being interviewed is Jackie Eubanks. She's running for state representative in Michigan, and her agenda is insane. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, we've got to talk about the guy interviewing her. This is him. You fight the homo heresy. Bombs are hitting their target. Sodomy is a form of marriage. U.S. bishops were and are in bed with the Democratic Party. Evil is evil, whether it wears a swastika or a hammer and sickle or hides behind a hypocritical do-good cultural agenda. And draw our swords, the sword of spirit and truth. Uh, guys in swords, you know, we, we, whatever, what can I say? And how does one slay dragons in the world today? by realizing that their fiery breath is blasted into the minds of men in the form of corrupting thoughts. He's some extremely far-right theocratic YouTuber who combines a mix of uh, militaristic terminology and religious doctrine to create some cluster f I don't know what it is. But apparently he has a news show and he had her on to talk about her campaign and what she believes in. And what she's describing is a fringe form of a theocratic nightmare for any rational person. And look, if you want to be a religious zealot, go for it. Who am I to tell you what you can or can't believe? But also, who the hell are you to tell me and everyone else how we should live ours? And what's really frustrating about these types of Republicans is they think that their religion should define and control the lives of everyone else. And that's just not how we do things here. But this type of ideology is getting more and more common. And she shares a lot of campaign platform planks with other Republicans, and here are some, they'll probably sound familiar. 
She wants strict voter ID laws. She wants to label Antifa a terrorist group. She wants to invest in the police. She wants to eliminate state income tax in Michigan on principle. She wants to ban mask mandates or any sort of vaccine protocols. She wants to eliminate any subsidies in green energy. She's against any form of gun control. She's anti-choice and she wants to fix the roads in Michigan. That's at the very bottom of her issues section on her campaign website, which kind of feels like people putting it together were like, okay, this is way too crazy. We need to find something to make you seem normal. Uh, roads, yes, let's, we're, gonna, we're gonna fix the roads. All of that isn't really that dissimilar from a vast majority of the Republican Party, and certainly the right-wing demagogues who are fueling this type of rise in the right. I mean, she has a section in there where she's talking about the 1619 Project, which comes from an academic's analysis of the origins of slavery in this country. And that became a big culture war fight, but it isn't really an issue that impacts voters and their material needs. But it just kind of signals to the right, hey, this is who I am, I'm paying attention, I'm, I'm with you in the 